Um, just to get us started, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got started writing? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Chloe Neal. Um, I am the author of, as of last week, 26 books. Wow. Um, I know it's congratulations. It's, it's ridiculous. Thank you. Um, they are okay. the dark elite books. Um, the, the devil's all that's Baxter barking in background. Um, mm -hmm. what else have I written? Uh, Kit, Captain Kit Breitling, Chicago land vampires, um, and heirs of Chicago land. So most of those are urban fantasy. Um, Kit Breitling is kind of a romantic um, historical fantasy. And then uh, Devil's Isle is young adult fantasy. Um, Devil's Isle, Arrows of Chicago Land and Chicago Land Vampires set in Chicago. And then the other two are set in other places. I started writing um, really not that long ago in about, um, well, not relatively speaking, 2007. I had I got divorced um, and I read a lot. That was my coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. And that was really before books and series were kind of as big as they are now. And I ran out of things to read and I thought, well, maybe I'll just kind of try it and see. And oh, um, Some Girls Bite, which is the first uh, Chicagoland Vampires book was the second thing I wrote. The first one was awful. Um, <laughs> and then it's just been one book after another. Well, sometimes three books after another, but one book after another from there since about 2007. Wow, it's incredible. So it just kind of like yeah. came right out of you. Pretty much. Yeah, I, I actually had avoided writing a lot. I used to have a job where I was a receptionist um, oh, for a law firm. And I would see people like go into their offices and lock the door because they had to write a brief on a deadline. I was like, oh, that's the worst. It's the worst mm -hmm. thing you could possibly have to do. I'm now a lawyer and a writer. So all <laughs> I do all day is write things. So I got, I got over it enough, I guess, to, to keep doing it. Wow. So you balance both being a lawyer and a writer. Currently. Yep, I have a day job and I have had the same day job since since before I started writing, basically. So that's incredible. I am incredibly impressed with your ability to balance both those because I would have a nervous breakdown. You know, we don't have kids, which helps a lot. And I really like to stay busy. Um, mm -hmm. So that helps, too. I, I'm not a you know, most of my family's in Arkansas. I live in Nebraska. And so it's I mean, just to be real honest, my husband's a gamer. He does his thing. I do my thing. So it we are in a circumstance where it works, but I mean, I can't imagine having kids and, and having to do the two additional jobs. That would just be way too much. A total, just the people who can do that are absolutely amazing. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm in, I'm incredibly impressed with that just in general. Mm -hmm. So um, let's go back a little bit and talk how you talk about how you discovered that urban fantasy was like the place that your voice just matched perfectly. Um, so I've always loved magic and I especially like magical realism where you get kind of mm -hmm. the contemporary world, but with, with magic layered over it. Yeah. Um, I grew up reading fairy tales and any kind of, I'm still trying to find a good word for it, sacred stories, mythology, whatever you'd want to call it from kind of different nations. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that was, that was really the spark because I've just always loved those. Uh, I started reading, let's see, probably Kim Harrison, um, what else did I read? I'm trying to think of what was around in those early days and it wasn't nearly so much. Um, I think like Black Dagger, Black Dagger Brotherhood had just started. Um, mm -hmm. Jay Wells had a book out, but it was kind of right at the beginning of that Twilight Vampire phase when yeah. urban fantasy was really just starting to be developed. Um, and I started reading those and thought, oh my God, this is, this is it. This is like the match between, um, you know, people, these kind of, especially in those early days, women um, who have discovered this secret power or whatever, they've mm -hmm. discovered there's more to the city than they thought there was, and they're going to go out and be a part of it and take down bad guys. And I love that. I just, I love that contradiction between the supernatural and kind of just the regular everyday world stuff. Yeah. Do you love building the city too, like creating its own character around the city? I do. I think Chicago really is, especially Chicago, is a character mm -hmm. in, in both or all three of my series that are set there. Um, that was another thing I, I knew I wanted to put, um, set the books in a city that I could get to relatively easily so that I could explore mm -hmm. and go through neighborhoods and think about, you know, maybe this park would be a good place to set something. Um, yeah. And Chicago was, was within a day's drive, but also it's super easy for me to imagine like a demon is the mayor of Chicago. Like Chicago has a very... Um, you know, it's politics are crazy often. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a city that's got some issues. It's very easy for me to imagine that supernaturals are in there kind of mixing things up. So it seemed like a natural fit. Oh, man. Do you remember the first time you fell in love with Chicago? So I actually, um, I went, I'm trying to think if I, I don't think I had traveled much before. I think it was maybe the second time I was on a plane. Mm -hmm. um, and I flew to Chicago in 1990. 
would that have been 96, um, to volunteer at the Democratic National Convention, um, so because cool. I just, I happened to be in Arkansas, mm -hmm. you know, Bill Clinton was there, maybe I was, maybe it was 90, no, it was 96, um, and I had never been there before, and it's, the thing about Chicago that I love is it's got so many contradictions, I mean, it's this amazing architecture in a Midwestern landscape, but it's right yeah. next to Lake Michigan, so the city kind of opens up in front of you, and it doesn't feel claustrophobic like a lot of Midwestern Great Plains places can. Mm -hmm. um, and I just absolutely adored it. I mean, we did all the stereotypical Chicago stuff that you did in the 90s. We, um, and I just thought it was the, the greatest place ever. So oh. I am recently obsessed with Chicago. I was there two weeks ago for the oh. first time, like actually yeah. in the city getting to explore. So I'm like trying to keep all my Chicago questions very very yeah. limited, but I have a million. <laughs> well, no, I love to talk about <laughs> Chicago. I haven't been, I haven't been anywhere, like literally out of my hometown since the pandemic started. Um, and then we had some family stuff. So I'm, I'm really eager to get back, but it's been a while since I've been, it's been a oh, good three years, probably. Wow. Do you create like tours or anything that readers can follow on when, when they're following the different series that are set in Chicago? There are a few pages um, on my extras website that have photographs of some of the scenes that are uh, the places where the books take place. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have anything like that. That's been a goal that I've had for a long time. Um, food is a big deal in Chicagoland Vampires and Heirs of Chicagoland. Mm -hmm. um, some of the places are made up, some of them are real. So I, I think a reader's guide to Chicago would be a lot of fun. Um, and that's a lot, I'd love to have the time to do that in the future. Yeah, that would be super fun. Um, well, let's, so also, were you always a big reader? You mentioned that you came to writing a little bit later, but had yeah. reading always been a passion of yours? I've always loved to read. Um, my mom started by reading the Little House on the Prairie books to me when I was probably three. And I still, cool. it's a very strange, I still remember seeing those books, like the paper, I had this little like paperback set of them. I still mm -hmm. remember seeing the words in the books and having no idea what those were. Like, I don't even know if I recognize they were letters, but I just remember seeing <laughs> it, not understanding it. And now I do a reread of those books. I mean, they, they, they're they problematic. I, I won't even lie, but um, there's something just really comforting to me about that. And I just, yeah, I love to read. I, I read every day, if not for work, then for, I get my one hour every day of reading time. And, um, I love it. I love visiting other places and, and kind of going other places in my mind. Absolutely. Um, what was the first book you remember loving? Oh gosh. Um, probably something like, um, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. I remember mm -hmm. reading all of those books, like Beverly Cleary. I loved Ramona, anything in that kind of genre. Um, how to eat fried worms was a big thing when I was in elementary school. I loved that book. Um, but I read, I mean, I was a voracious reader. I spent a lot of time in the library when I was a little kid. Um, I love the smell of libraries, mm -hmm. um, oh, but there's, gosh. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, I've had series that I've been obsessive about. You could see my JD Rob collection back there. <laughs> it is, it is substantial. It's every, well, it's everything. Um, and I've been obsessive about a sorted series over time. But I, the first thing I remember were kind of those preteen, pre adolescent. What is it like to be a person? You know, kind of growing up books. I love that. What inspired your Chicago Land Vampire series and the spinoff? Um, so the first idea that I had for Chicago Land Vampires, other than knowing that I wanted to write urban fantasy and I wanted a series with, um, continuing characters mm -hmm. where we could have some of the inside jokes and kind of the found family. Um, I had, oh, this is, I tell the story every time and I'm embarrassed by it. Um, the first thing I wrote <laughs> was Merit in a band with Mallory and some of the other characters. And like, there's some controversy over whether she's going to get to play at a club that they're supposed to play at. And she goes backstage and gets bitten by a vampire. And mm -hmm. um, Morgan Greer from Chicago and Vampires was the club owner. Like the whole thing is just ridiculous. The setup <laughs> is really stupid, but I liked Merritt and I liked who these characters were, but the circumstances were bad. And one day I got this idea of this blonde vampire who looked in my mind like David Beckham, who was just very cold and very frosty. Mm -hmm. and um, would be kind of Merritt's foil. And that was really the beginning of it, was kind of understanding who they were together. And then the stories unfolded from there. Awesome. And that's Merritt and Ethan, if you guys haven't read, start with Some Girls Bite. And that's, that's your first book. <laughs> well, don't worry. We're going to make sure we have lots of time for our readers that have questions for you. Awesome. Um, for follow-up, for sure. 
Um, well, what do you love about setting your books in Chicago? Oh, so we kind of already talked about that. I know we talked about Everything. your love, but like, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, there are so many layers. That's the great thing is that you can talk about food. You can think about politics. You have the lake, you have the architecture. Um, you have an amazing history, which plays a big part in devouring darkness. There's just a lot of things to draw from because Chicago has such a rich history. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I loved on the website when I was doing a little bit of research that your current crafting projects involve baking. What have yes. you been baking recently? Um, so my go-to probably is, um, I love cookies and I'm pretty good at making cookies. They're what very kind of simple. So mm. I have several go-to recipes. I have a usually big, like soft sugar cookies, or I just made some molasses ginger cookies, which are fantastic. Um, I have some, I, I can share some of my favorite recipes online so folks can, uh, can download Absolutely. those, but I just made a huge batch of, ch batch of chocolate chip, which I love. Um, I made cornbread last week. And it is so good. My husband eats it like dessert. I mean, it is, I'm Southern and it is very, very sweet for a oh, Southern, man. For Southern cornbread, but it is really good. Um, so I do that. I try to limit because we only, you know, you only need so many, so many sweets in the house. And then quilting is my other current passion. And these are both Ooh. quilts that I have made. So I got obsessed with that during the, because I get obsessed with things. Um, mm -hmm. During the pandemic, I fixed my mother, my great grandmother's um, 1972 sewing machine is kind of just something to do and started quilting and 43 quilts later I'm still going at it because I do things Chloe, that's, that's incredible what I do. that's Had, what I do were you already a sewer before that oh no no what no. this is my thing like I just jump into it and now I find um so I'm also super into k-dramas and c dramas mm -hmm. so I watch mm -hmm. that and now I'm hand sewing which is like if you'd ask me five years ago would I ever do that because I'm so impatient I would have said no you're <laughs> insane but right I did I I've always I was started college as an art major and I've always been artistic but I feel like I kind of found my medium at 45 um because it's just it's very forgiving I mean you know you rip something apart you sew it together poorly you can rip it apart and sew it again for the most part yeah. um and you get to play with color and it's a uh, it's a medium that has worked better for me than most of the other mediums that I've tried. So it's a great way to kind of express that. And, and I think as I get older, I really like brighter colors randomly. Mm -hmm. So quilting kind of satisfies that I can, you know, dive in with really bright pinks and whatnot. That's so cool. Do you have a favorite pattern that you make? Um, so I do, I'm trying to think there's not really that I've done on repeat. Um, but this one is every, this entire quilt is two and a half inch squares. Oh, nice. um which mm -hmm. I love and it's rainbows all the way and that's such a fun size because you can do so much um in terms of shaping the quilt you can do ombre you can do all one color um and that I really enjoyed so because you I, I have a little um like boxes with little dividers in them and every time I get new fabric I cut them into my little pieces and then it's like adult color forms and you mm -hmm. just play and you you know put all the pieces together so that that to me is the most fun part oh my gosh well now I see a potential writing quilting baking retreat <laughs> yes, with special guest amazing. chloe neal <laughs> no, no i'm totally into that yeah so that I'm, yeah, incredible. i'll bring the I will... cookies yeah. <laughs> um so i'm going to jump now into some of our fun just little fresh fact questions uh you answer these however you feel all right first one what is your favorite genre to read Oh, goodness. Um, so it's changed over time. I used to be huge into paranormal romance and urban fantasy. I don't read those as much anymore because I write them and it's really hard for me to separate out reading and writing. Like, I feel like if I read them now, it I would just be like, well, that plot point is ridiculous and she should have put more attention here or mm -hmm. whatever. So I tend to avoid it. Um, I read a lot of nonfiction because that helps give me ideas for books. And I read a lot of I don't know what you would call it, kind of atmospheric science fiction. So the books I'm currently obsessed with are the Locked Tomb uh, trilogy. It's currently a trilogy, Waiting on Book Four, uh, by Tamsin Muir. And the first one is Gideon the Ninth. And I just mm -hmm. finished reading Known of the Ninth, which came out last week, and then immediately started reading the series again. Um, it's described as lesbian necromancers in like post-apocalyptic space, but it's the world is so deeply layered and the characters Ooh. are so like the voice is absolutely perfect. Um, so I've really been enjoying that. Um, I actually have an article. I, I'm not sure where that's going to come out, but in the next couple of weeks where I share some other picks, um, the Dead Gen series uh, by Peter Jelly Clark is fantastic. Um, but they're all really kind of unique spins on magic in our world and how they interact kind of uh, different, <coughs> excuse me, different takes on urban fantasy and the kind of your traditional 
um, you know, female becomes a defective or a or a uh, a guard for someone and develops magical powers, which no shade of that because obviously I write it. Um, mm -hmm. But they keep kind of keep me fresh and give me new ideas. I love that. So you're totally capable of writing um, in your genre while you're writing them or reading them. This because it's different enough, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but I don't read. I mean, there I tend to buy a lot of books, so. I buy Faith Hunter when it comes out. I buy Kevin Hearn when it comes out, but I have stacks that I haven't read yet because mm -hmm. I'm like, when Chicago and Vampires and, and Airs is done, then I can go back and catch up on all these other kind of urban fantasy books. Yeah, absolutely. So what's your favorite time of day to read? So I read um, every night. I go to bed at about 10. Right now I write from 10 to 11. That's my writing time. Um, and then from 11 until I fall asleep, usually later than it needs to be is my writing time. So I have at least an hour day. If I'm not writing, it would be between 10 and 11. Um, but that's, you know, the house is quiet, the dog's asleep, the husband's done. Um, mm -hmm. And that's my little like no distraction reading time. And I, I do it every day. I, I don't know when that started. I've done it for years, um, but it's my, it's my quiet time. So I love that. I think self-care is so important. That's it is. I mean, again, honestly, especially if you got two jobs, like you got to mm -hmm. make time to just breathe and writing. I mean, writers, you can only be so creative for so long before you really need to kind of fill up your creative well again. And that really Absolutely. helps keep you balanced. Absolutely. Um, well, we already kind of talked a little bit about your latest hobby, but have outside of baking and quilting, have you picked up any other hobbies or practice recently? Um, let's see, other than sewing, um, which is related to quilting, uh, the K-dramas, which are Korean mm -hmm. dramas, uh, which is, can be romantic comedies, thrillers, uh, I watch a lot of those, I have a subscription to Vicky, which is a, um, it's the streaming service for K-dramas and C-dramas, which are dramas, similar dramas that are based in China, um, but I, I never really watched much drama, I, mm -hmm. I was absolutely a Food Network person, so the person who talked about watching all the Halloween shows, that's me, um, it's on <laughs> pretty much 24-7, um, but there's something I really love, I, I think because I learned something every time I watch a K-drama about Korea or about China, um, and or about food which is fantastic mm -hmm. um i also watch a lot of like the costumed k drama and c dramas because they i mean one the fabrics are amazing but it's a completely different place in history it's basically let's be admit it it is a soap opera that's in a different language but they're so beautiful and they're so melodramatic and i don't know i just i so that's my latest thing that i've been on for the especially the last few months is just zooming through those I love that so much. Yeah, they are just addictive. They're so they good. really are. I mean, and they take forever. Like the C drama mm -hmm. I'm watching right now, 61 episodes of goodness. So it's like telenovela style, right? It there. totally is. It mm -hmm. totally is. So yeah. yeah, they're they're pretty fantastic. And again, a lot of them are paranormal or urban fantasy. So they mm -hmm. they do that linking between, you know, the human world, but there are magical creatures in it. And I I just love that. That's my sweet spot. Yeah, that's perfect. Who was your first book boyfriend or girlfriend? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I had one until I started reading, um, the in-depth books and probably Rourke is my all-time favorite book boyfriend. Um, because I got, I started reading those. And I mean, that is just the classic series for character development and for, um, found family for this group of people that come together to fight crime specifically, mm -hmm. but also just to, um, you know, kind of get to know each other and, and move past the, the past trauma that they all have. And he's just, he's beautiful and he's smart um, and he's brilliant and he's a thief. So he always has a witticism. Um, most recently, it's probably Riss from the Court of Thorn and Roses books because he's my book boyfriend and nobody else is allowed to have him. <laughs> um, he is such a great character and I, I, he totally surprised me. I had no idea that the books were going to go in that direction, but I just, I just absolutely adore him as character. He's fantastic. I love it. Um, what is your favorite writing fuel? A uh, caffeine, like a whole <laughs> lot of caffeine specifically. <laughs> um, so I'm writing devour, or, uh, Cold Curses, which is the fifth uh, Chicago, Arizona Chicagoland book. I'm writing it longhand because oh, wow. I'm crazy. So um, I found just uh, maybe after 25 books, sitting in a laptop and typing just was not doing it for me anymore. I love fountain pens and so fountain pens and good notebooks are probably my fuel right now because you get beautiful ink colors and the, mm -hmm. the handwriting can change and it I think it taps into that artistic sentiment while I'm also writing um so that's that that and again caffeine is probably the biggest fuel right now 
Oh man, how are you transcribing the uh, handwritten into digital? So I, I was, I tried typing, but it's so slow. So I use a dictation program mm -hmm. and then had to get, I just got the email today. I had to get two more weeks for my editor for this book because um, the editing process is a lot more when you do dictation because the dictation program that I was using at least was not, not the greatest. So, yeah. um, I mean, it's fine for what it is, but definitely you have to pay a lot more attention to, you know, homophones, yeah. mostly, mostly <laughs> homophones. <laughs> Oh, homonyms so the words that sound whichever one of those is the words that sound the same homonyms, homonyms. I think it's homonyms, homonyms. homonyms. Yeah. <laughs> well and I know like I doing these interviews weekly we hear about the writer's process and it's so interesting how over time everybody has a different way of approaching mm -hmm. it and and like every book is different you know yeah. like just I, I've, I've been very fascinated learning that from you guys yeah I you know I the problem with me is that I Every book has a definitely a different energy where they're easier mm -hmm. to write at some places and harder to write in others. But my husband likes to remind me that I complain at the, I make the same complaints for every book every single time. So he's convinced it's exactly the same. <laughs> I can never get this done. You say that every time. This is the best book I've ever written. You say that every, every time. time. So regardless of what the complaint is, um, he's convinced that it's the same, you know, the same process for every <laughs> single book. But it is the energy definitely is different. <laughs> Do you um, do anything special to celebrate in your release? Um, you know, release weeks are really stressful for me. I'm a high anxiety person anyways. Um, mm. I like getting new contracts because that's just, you know, like that's the promised land. That's when mm. you can just, you're, you, you, the door has been open for you to be creative, but release weeks are like judgmental, mm. <laughs> you know, is your book going to come to fruition? Are you going to meet the goals that you set for yourself? And that's just too stressful. Um, so normally ice cream, like lots of ice cream or cookies, they're homemade chocolate chip cookies in this case, which are absolutely to die Heaven. for. Um, oh, so they're so good. So <laughs> some sort of a food related calming mechanism. What is your favorite thing to do when you're avoiding writing? Oh my goodness. Quilting and baking, probably <laughs> procrastinating baking was a word mm -hmm. that we came up with a few years ago. Um, like everybody else, I will tidy up and straighten the house. I redid the quilting room, um, which was just a front room that had a couch in it. And I kind of shoved a um, sewing machine in there, but then now we put in an Ikea bookcase and I have a cutting table and it looks like nice. a little studio. And that was, I mean, I was on a deadline when I did it, but <laughs> you got to take a break, you know, you just, Absolutely. you just got to. That's the best, you know, got to refill your uh, creative child. Yep, absolutely. As absolutely. Julia Cameron would say. <laughs> yeah. What is some advice that you would give to your younger self? Um, it'll all be fine. I mean, I, I have the anxiety thing goes back a very long time and just kind of knowing that getting through adolescence and middle school and drama and, you know, heartbreak that ultimately it's all going to be okay. And you'll... It, I, I mean, you could not pay me to go back. I'm, I'm 47. You could not pay me to go back and be, you know, 15 or 20 again, because I just didn't know anything. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm at a point in my career, both of my careers, I guess, where I can just kind of sit back a little bit and be proud of what I've done. And that's a great feeling. And I, I would like to just give a little of that peace and calmness to younger, younger Chloe. So she could not be freaking out all of the time. <laughs> You know, and it's good advice for us to just internalize now too. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And that's, some, I have to try to remember myself. And I, you know, there's, it, it sounds really trite to say, to be grateful, you know, be thankful or blessed or that kind of hashtaggy thing. But honestly, that's one of the best ways to relieve my anxiety is just to think about myself in the greater world. And that I'm a small little piece of it and that I'm fine and I'm safe, you know, and, and I have a lot to be grateful for. So that is definitely something that I, I try to remind myself a lot. Awesome. Um, what kind of, oh, that's, that's a weird question. Are you a pantser or a plotter? Oh, 100% plotter. Um, mm -hmm. I turn in an outline every time um, for my editor wow. and I get paid for that. So that's part of the, um, the way that the advance payment kind of advance payment is made by my particular publisher is that I get paid on delivery of the manuscript, but also on delivery of the outline. Um, most of my books take place over the course of about a week. So my outlines have evolved over time from this weirdly weird, like complicated chart thing um, to an actual Microsoft Word outline with the indents. Um, and now it's more of a, I do like a, a summary of kind of a general plot. 
And then I will do a day by day synopsis of what's going to happen. Mm. Um, and the reason I like that is it gives me enough detail that when I sit down at night, I know, okay, well, now we're going to this place and we're going to fight this guy, but it's not so detailed that writing feels like it's just an administrative task. Like there's still room to be creative. Um, but it also is a great way for me to make sure that, um, because I insist on putting like 45 subplots in every book, mm -hmm. visually, it makes it very easy to track and make sure that I didn't drop a thread. Sometimes I'll go through and use Microsoft Word and highlight it in color. So like all the romance bits are pink. And I know that I've, sh you know, Elisa and Connor had a moment on this day and they had a moment on this day and, and just making sure that all of the plots don't get dropped and that they all kind of follow through and make sense. So that's, that's my way to keep, try to keep it balanced. That's cool. Well, I want to make sure that we have time to ask you um, our questions that we had all of our readers answer, our name game questions. Could you tell us, I know you just mentioned some of the K, or you mentioned that you've been watching some K-dramas, but sure. have you, ha, do you have any books or movies or TV shows that you would like to share with us as well? Sure. So um, reading, I am currently rereading. I just finished Gideon the Ninth last night and I'm reading mm -hmm. Hero the Ninth, which is the second book in that series. Um, I just finished a couple of fantastic nonfiction books by Ed Young. Um, one is We Contain Multitudes, which is about the role of bacteria in your body. And it sounds really dry, but it is fascinating because we live in such a weird, like symbiotic relationship with the little, with the little critters. Um, and then there's another one he just, that just came out about uh, the way that animals experience the world. Um, and it's science, but it's not dry. It's so many real world examples um, that I just, they're fantastic. Um, Let's see. Oh, and then next is um, Heartbreaker by Sarah McLaughlin or Sarah McLaughlin, Sarah McLean, <laughs> who I absolutely adore that series and I cannot wait. But I, I told myself I would reread the, the Lock Two books first. Um, listening, I am obsessed with No Such Thing as a Fish, which is a podcast based in the UK. It's kind of facts and trivia. Um, there's like 400 and maybe 50 episodes, and, I, and I've been working my way backwards. So I'm up to 200 at this point. Um, Let's see, watching, I just, so the K-drama I'm watching right now is called The Immortal Samsara. If you're interested in K-drama, um, What's Wrong with Secretary Kim is a great place to start. And it is on, I can't remember if it's Hulu or Amazon Prime, but I, it's on one of those. Um, and Netflix has a ton. If you're, I mean, pretty much any streaming station you're on is going to have a lot of K-dramas because they're just very popular right now. Um, and then favorite thing about Chicago is probably the architecture because you there's just whatever kind of architecture you like, you're going to find it in Chicago. And I, I just think that's fantastic. Awesome. The landscape is really, there's just so much to see. Well, Chloe, before I turn this over to our readers, how can um, the viewers watching right now stay in touch with you and find out more about you? Sure. So you can visit me at chloeneal.com. Um, there's extras, there's deleted scenes. That entire merit was in a band thing is on the extras page. It's horrible and you should absolutely go read it. Um, <laughs> there's also a book list there. Uh, and then I'm on Facebook at author Chloe Neal, Twitter at Chloe Neal and Instagram at Chloe Neal. Awesome. Well, Chloe Neal, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm going to now turn this over to our readers for some follow-up questions. Awesome. Thanks so much.